Hi, welcome to my new tutorial. In the first part of this video, I'm going to show you a straightforward way how to create motion captures with your webcam or from any video on the internet with people in it using a free add-on in Blender. After that, we will turn these motion captures into animated control nets in 3D space and save them as an image sequence for further use. In the second part of this tutorial, I will show you how to create a workflow in Comfy UI that makes use of these control nets. We will also create our own personal avatar out of a single image using the Face ID IP adapters, which will then be posed or animated with the help of the control nets. So let's get right into it. For creating the control nets, we need to download a free Blender file by Toy XYZ from Gumroad. I've already covered this Blender workflow in depth in my previous tutorial. Link down below so you can take a look if you like to get more detailed information. In this tutorial, we're going to take it a step further and animate the control nets with our self-created motion captures. Now let's open the Blender file. I'll just give you a quick overview. You can find more details in my previous tutorial. On the left hand side, we have an overview of the different control net layers for canny, depth, key pose, open pose, and so on. On the right top, you can switch between the different control net layers. And when you select one, let's say open pose, you can see in the left window which elements are visible and which are hidden in this layer. Let's switch to render mode to see how the pose will be rendered for the selected control net. As we are in 3D space, we can look at it from different angles. We can also zoom in or out freely. With its attached control rig, we can set the model into any pose we like, and we could also keyframe these poses in order to create self-made animations, but today we'll do it in a much more sophisticated way, using mocap data that we will extract from a webcam or video footage. So let's save the Blender file under a new name in order to keep the original file intact. Next, we need to install a free plugin for managing our motion captures. Let's go to GitHub and get the Blend AR mocap tool, link down below. It says that it's discontinued, but it still works pretty well, so don't worry. If you find a newer version, please let me know. Now let's download the zip file. Once that's done, let's head over to the documentation page and take a look at the installation procedure. It says that for the installation, we need to run Blender as an administrator, so let's do it. Let's first exit Blender. Now in Windows, it's quite easy. Just right click on the Blender app and run it as administrator. As I'm on my Mac, it takes a bit more. Let's open the terminal app and type the following. sudo open applications Blender app contents macOS Blender and then enter your password. I'll leave the command down in the description so you just need to copy and paste it. When Blender has started, go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons and hit Install. Find the zip file we just downloaded and click on Install Add-on. Once it is installed, activate it and open the add-on details. Click on Install Dependencies and wait until it's finished. You might need to run Blender as an administrator whenever you want to use your webcam for recording your motion captures. When working with video files, you can just run it as a normal user. We also need to check if the Rigify add-on is activated, so let's take a look. If it isn't, let's activate it. Now we can close the Preferences window and we are good to go. On the right hand side you can find a new tab called Blend AR, so let's click on it. If it doesn't show up, simply press N to unhide the controls. You can choose between Media Pipe and Free Mocap. In this tutorial, I will cover Media Pipe as it's built in and easy to use, while for using Free Mocap, you would need to install another app. So let's open Media Pipe. Here we can choose between a webcam or a movie upload as our motion capture input. If you have more than one webcam available, like in my case, the camera of my MacBook and my iPhone, I can choose which one I'm going to use. 
so 0 is the built-in webcam and 1 is the iPhone. Still, for this tutorial I'm going to use the movie Input using a free video that I downloaded from Pixabay. So let's open the video. I will also extend the number of frames to a higher value, maybe 300. One more thing, there's a built-in animation of the ControlNet character, so let me quickly delete this before we continue. I will select Pose as the target, which will try to detect the whole body. Hands will just try to detect the hand movements, and Face will try to detect faces, while Holistic will try to detect all elements at once. I will leave the key step at 4, which places a keyframe every 4 steps, which I found is quite a reasonable setting. Now hit the Detect Clip button to start the detection process. You can see that the video clip will be played in a new window and the MediaPipe algorithm is trying to detect the body movements and is setting markers on the different body parts in real time. If you were using your webcam instead of an input video, the detection process would be just the same. You can stop the detection process anytime by pressing Stop Detection. And now, on the left side you can see that a new collection has been created, which contains a large number of empty markers, one for each landmark of the person that has been detected by the media pipe detector. When we start the animation, you can see that these markers are moving according to the body movements. It's not so easy to distinguish the little black dots of the markers moving, but they are there. Now the challenge is to retarget all these markers to our control net rig. There is a transfer section in the Blend AR mocap add-on which helps us to achieve just that, but the problem is that it works only with a standard Rigify rig and not with our custom control net rig. But there's a quick and dirty workaround for that, which isn't completely perfect, but still quite feasible for our purposes. If you find a better solution, please let me know. First, let's switch back to object mode and create a new Rigify armature by pressing Shift A Armature Human Meta Rig. Let's now open the Items tab and set its location to 0, then switch to Front View, hit S, and move the mouse to scale down the armature so it has roughly the same size as our control net mesh. Then go to Object. Apply all transforms to lock in the new values. You can see that the two poses don't exactly match, so we need to go to pose mode and correct that. Click on the upper arm, choose the rotate tool and rotate the arm into the right position, then do the same with the other arm and the legs. When you're done, select pose, apply, apply pose as rest pose, then let's switch back to object mode. Next thing to do is creating the Rigify rig, so click on Object Data Properties and then on Generate Rig. We need to wait for a little while until the rig is created. We don't need the MetaRig armature anymore, so let's delete it by selecting it and pressing the X key. Now back to the Blend AR mocap add-on. In the Transfer section, select Rig as the armature, pose as the driver and then hit the Transfer Animation button. If this button isn't selectable, make sure that you are in object mode. When you start the animation, you can see that our newly created rig is moving accordingly, but the control net mesh is still static. Let's fix that for each control net we need. Let's switch to rendered mode. In the left window, click on the open pose body mesh, and in the right window, click on modifiers you can see that there is a rig modifier pointing at the original control net rig. Let's change it to our new rig and make sure that bone envelopes is checked. You can see the open pose mesh now changes to the new pose and when we hit the play button the mesh is now dancing, like the lady in the video. As you are in 3D space you can watch the control net from any angle and you can zoom in and out like you could never do in a plain video. Now let's do the same for the other control nets. When we switch to open pose full, you can see that the body is already animated while the hands are still static. So let's select the hand mesh, set the object to rig and activate bone envelopes. Now it's fixed. I'll repeat this process for some other control nets.
that I'm going to use later in Comfy UI. Yet there is a problem with this method. For some control nets that are showing the full body mesh, the body gets messed up because I didn't make a full mesh retargeting, which can be quite a tedious process as you have to match all bones of the two armatures. Still, I, the most important control nets are working just fine, so I'll leave it at that point. Let me know if you have a better solution. Final step before we start rendering out control net animations is setting up the camera. When you click on the little camera icon at the right, you get into the camera view. That's the view that finally will be rendered. Then select the camera in the left window, then hit G and move the mouse. You can see that the camera view is moving. Let's set it to the proper position. Let's change the render resolution to 1920 by 1080. That's the HD video size. We can now also make some camera movements through our scene and keyframe the different camera positions in the timeline, but I won't get deeper into it in this tutorial. Just watch my previous tutorial where this step is explained. Last step in Blender before we move over to Comfy UI. It's time to render our animation. Open the Render menu and select Render Image to render the current image or render animation to render the whole scene into an image sequence. A new folder, MultiControlNet, will be created within the folder where your Blender file is located and within that folder there is a subfolder with an image sequence for each control net. We can now use these image sequences in our workflow in Comfy UI. For that purpose, I'm going to switch over to my Windows computer because it has a quite powerful NVIDIA graphics card and can render Comfy UI animations faster than my MacBook. So here we are in Comfy UI. If you don't know how to install and use it, I will leave a link down below. In order to load the Comfy UI workflows for image and video creations, just download the two PNG files that I've attached in the description. Let's start with the image creation. Just drag the mocap workflow image PNG file into the Comfy UI browser window and the workflow will load. When you drag the workflow into Comfy UI, you might encounter an error message like this, which means that you need to install some additional custom nodes in order to make it work. If that's the case, just open the Comfy UI manager and click on Install Missing Custom Nodes. Then install the required nodes and after that restart Comfy UI. If you get an error message while executing the workflow, the nodes where the error occurs will be marked. It's mostly due to a missing model and in that case, open the Comfy UI manager again, click on Install Models, search for the model that's missing and install it. If you can't find it there, give it a search on GitHub, Hugging Face, or Civit AI. I will leave a link down below. I will now give you just a quick overview on the workflows I've prepared for image and video creation, but I'm going to prepare another in-depth tutorial where I will focus on the details as soon as I have the time. So let's start. With the Face ID IP adapter, you can create stable and reproducible character faces in images and videos by using just a single full facial photo, so just upload one. You can also crop it to the desired size. For the OpenPose control net, we need one single image from the OpenPose full image sequence that we've created in Blender, so upload the one you like. You can also set the image size as well as the positive and negative prompt and the model, and then just hit Q prompt to render the image. When you change the prompt and re-render, you may get a totally different image but still depicting the same person and the same pose. Well, now let's move over to the animation workflow. Just drag the mocap workflow video PNG into the Comfy UI browser window and the workflow will load. If you encounter any errors, just follow the same procedure as I've explained before with the image workflow. You can see that the animation workflow is much more complex than the image workflow, 
but I've left some notes beneath the most important elements of the workflow, so just read them carefully if something is unclear to you. As I said, I will prepare a special tutorial covering the Comfy UI workflows as soon as I have the time. Also, you may subscribe to the channel if you want to get notified. One more important thing to mention. As we are creating an animation, we need the whole image sequence for the control net, not just a single image. So head over to the folder where the image sequence for OpenPose Full is located, right click on the folder and select Copy as Path. Then paste the path into the Load Images node and make sure to remove the quotation marks at the beginning and the end of the path name, or it won't work. Then hit Q Prompt to render the animation, which can take a few minutes depending on your hardware. If it takes too long, just try lowering the image size. Well, that's all for today. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or problems, just leave me a comment, or when it's urgent, send me an email to my channel account, as I don't always have the time to read all comments in a timely manner. So thanks for watching, hope to see you in the next one.